Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe to the channel. All right, today we're going to take a look at Chorus Aviation, which provides regional aviation services mostly to Jazz and Air Canada, as well as operating an aircraft leasing division. The stock has a 6% dividend yield, which it pays monthly. And I thought this stock was interesting because it trades at about nine times earnings, but in the words of Donald Trump, it has a huge economic dependence on Air Canada. About 90% of their revenue in 2018 came from their partnership with Air Canada. Earlier this year, just renewed its commercial agreement with Air Canada through to 2035. But if you're familiar with the Aeroplan story, Air Canada doesn't exactly have a good track record of dealing with its partners. This video will review the Chorus business model, including terms of the updated agreement. It's going to walk through the Aeroplan case study, and then it's going to conclude with key considerations for investors. Let's jump into it. So the Chorus business model, as we discussed, they operate in two divisions, an aviation services division and an aircraft leasing division, uh, both focused primarily on regional flights. The company owns 40 aircraft and leases an additional 92, and it has over 5,000 employees, including pilots, flight attendants, service crews, maintenance crews, etc. For the share price, uh, it's currently trading at $7.84, and over the last two years, it's been largely flat. Um, in December, on December 16th, it hit a low of $5.22. This, of course, was before the commercial agreement was extended. Uh, of course, the market was also uh, in the doldrums uh, in December. Everything was weak and lower. But since then, it's rebounded back, and it's currently trading at $7.84. And as I mentioned, in early 2019, uh, the new commercial agreement was signed with Air Canada. So what does the new agreement look like? Well, first of all, it uh, originally was set to expire in 2025. So that has been extended out now to 2035. So um, another 16 years of, uh, of contracted revenue through this agreement. And it guarantees two and a half billion dollars in revenue over the well. They've got 17 years here, so someone's math's wrong. I'll, I'll go with mine. Um, and some of that through the aircraft leasing, some of that through fixed fees um, that they generate through the services they provide um, in terms of actually operating the air, aircraft. So important to note here: they're not just leasing the aircraft to Air Canada; they're actually also operating them with fully staffed crews, etc. As part of the agreement, Air Canada invested uh, $97 million into Chorus uh, and is going to have a seat on the board. It, uh, that works out to be about 10% of the company. And they also point out that there's some guardrails on what they call controllable costs, such as wages. So if you think about the staff that, that are required to, to run the plane. So there's guardrails here that protect both sides to make sure that it's really more of a, a cost pass through to uh, Air Canada. One thing that did come with this um, certainty through to 2035 was lower revenues in the short term. So the revenue in each of 2019 and 2020 are expected to decrease and you can see on the slide and this is all from, uh, I should point out, this is all from, Chorus has a really good investor presentation. I believe um, this was their most recent one on the, on the website, but actually does a great job of going through the business uh, business model and providing good charts um, and, a, and a pretty good overview. Uh, so here, Air Canada in the press release said that it expects to save $50 million annually in each of 2019 and 2020. Uh, Chorus shows here a 50, $59 million dollar reduction uh, in, in the two-year period, so for 2019 and 2020. So they get the benefit of terming out the agreement uh, from 2025 to 2035. In the medium term, there's good growth here in terms of the revenue that um, Chorus expects to generate. You can see here in the original CPA versus the revised, so there should be some good growth there. But in the short term, um, there could be a little bit of pain in terms of reduced revenue just for the next year or two. 
And then just really quickly on the aircraft leasing division. So course hopes to diversify away from its dependency on Air Canada. And one of the big ways it hopes to do that is through um, the build out of their aircraft leasing division. And you can see here that funding for this business is largely secured. There was a $200 million convert investment from Fairfax. There's a public share offering. We've got the Air Canada investment. So 400 million of capital um, to grow the business. And of course, they're planning to leverage that up when you're leasing aircraft, put a lot of debt on it. So at about three to one, so that gives you an idea of the, uh, well, they talk about $1.6 billion of capital uh, ready to grow the, biz the business. And they currently have a fleet of 45 aircraft with leases across all continents on the globe. Now, I can't do a video without a quick look at the financials. So 2018, I'm just on the cash flow statement here in the um, year end results. And it shows cash flow from operations of 240 million. <clears throat> now, given this business has real depreciation, so they own a significant amount of aircraft. Um, air aircraft is depreciated over 25 to 30 years with little to no residual value. Um, so I actually think a reasonable proxy for free cash flow here is just to take the cash flow from operations and subtract the depreciation. We could have looked at CapEx down in cash flow from investing activities, but we know that Chorus is growing their fleet and looking to grow their operations. So um, there'd be some growth CapEx mixed in. So for simplicity, I'm just taking uh, cash flow from operations, less depreciation. And what that gives us here is $161 million of free cash flow in 2018 and 135 in 2017. Um, based on the current dividend levels, they need about $75 million in dividends annually. Uh, so it's well covered based on 2018 free cash flow. It works out to a payout ratio of about 47%. Free cash flow yield to investors based on the current share price is about 13% as well. Uh, but one thing to note as an investor here, there's a significant amount of debt in the business. So you might want to also look at free cash flow to the enterprise, It'd be another way of looking at it. And then the last point I'll, I'll make here is obviously we just talked about the revised commercial agreement with Air Canada and there are reduced uh, revenues and fees uh, to course in the short term. So we could see uh, and would likely expect to see free cash flow uh, decrease in 2019. Um, there could be some short term pressure on free cash flow uh, and then expect that to improve uh, beyond 2020. Obviously, you have to take the offset of they're growing the business outside of Air Canada as well. So now for the fun part, um, there's another company in business that uh, was tied at the hip with Air Canada and it did not end well. And so I thought it'd be interesting to just review the case study, what happened and provides an interesting comparison for, for Chorus. So Aeroplan uh, initially IPO'd and was a spinoff from Air Canada back in 2005. And it was a $250 million IPO for about a 12.5% stake in the business, so a $2 billion valuation. And before then, Aeroplan was 100% owned by Air Canada. So they spun this out to investors who bought into the IPO back in 2005. They signed a 15-year agreement right at IPO, uh, so there was certainty around um, the agreement between Aeroplan and Air Canada and the ability for them to have access to seat allocation, preferential pricing for, for rewards, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and for, I, I think most people are aware of the Aeroplan plan business model, but it was the loyalty, um, loyalty platform for Air Canada. So in 2017, Air Canada, so fast forward 12 years from the IPO, Air Canada announced it was cutting ties with Aeroplan, uh, which is now AMIA was the name of the corporate entity over top. Um, and the stock crashed, as you can see on the right hand side here, it crashed about 75%. So it went from a little over $8 a share to just over $2 a share in a, in a 
in a very short period of time because the most meaningful part of the business was Aeroplan and, um, and Air Canada announced that they would not be renewing their agreement when it was up for renewal. Uh, so the stock crashed and then to add insult to injury, uh, in 2018 they agreed to buy back the Aeroplan business for $450 million. So in 2017 they announced that they were cutting ties with Aeroplan um, but of course, Air Canada needed a loyalty plan, um, and so in 2018, um, they agreed to buy it back for $450 million. Now, one thing I will point out here, um, Aeroplan slash AMIA didn't exactly help their cause. They had attempted to grow and diversify away from, from simply the Aeroplan business. They had taken on a significant amount of debt, and the balance sheet was not in a good place and, and that's one of the reasons that left them so vulnerable here. Um, but from Air Canada's perspective, the optics of spinning out a business to investors at a $2 billion valuation, walking away from renewing the agreement 12 years later, only to buy the business back for pennies on the dollar, well the optics are simply put, awful. So now key considerations for investors. So. Chorus, we know it's an asset-heavy business model that has real depreciation. Number two, uh, the renewed commercial agreement provides a base and scale from which to diversify. It gives them that certainty of cash flow through to 2035, which is a real benefit to investors, and it gives them a lot of time to actually grow and diversify away uh, from what is right now um, pretty much exclusively a business dependent on Air Canada. Risk factors to the stock include, uh, just a couple quick ones here, unionized employees, so those 5,000 plus employees, many of them are, are pilots, uh, flight attendants, uh, maintenance staff, almost all of them are unionized. Number two, aircraft operation, um, any risks to uh, any incidents or accidents. Uh, the debt levels, uh, of course, are going to be elevated here uh, given the financing of the aircraft and the dependence on Air Canada, which has been the topic of most of the video. Number four, Air Canada has a track record of pulling the rug out from partners and their investors. Uh, Aeroplan is the case study in question here. And the last key consideration, as 2035 gets closer, will Chorus be able to learn from Aeroplan's mistake and ensure the business can stand on its own two feet? Uh, or will this business model continue to be dependent on renewed agreements uh, with Air Canada. That's it for today's video. Let me know what you think. Will Chorus be able to do it? Uh, will they be able to grow and diversify away? Will they also be able to create real shareholder value um, in a leasing business um, with assets that depreciate? Or is this really just a low to no growth uh, yield play? Uh, looking forward to your comments in the comment section below. Stay tuned for more com content coming soon. But until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.